Lake sturgeon used to be found in large numbers throughout the Great Lakes region. They were once considered a nuisance because they damaged fishing nets and had no commercial value. However, markets expanded for sturgeon meat and a variety of other products, as railroad transport increased along with global shipping. By the late 1800s, the United States had discovered the market for lake sturgeon caviar. Caviar is cured or salted fish eggs and considered a delicacy. Sturgeon populations outside the United States were harvested heavily, but could not meet growing demand. Attention turned to North American species like lake sturgeon to supply meat and caviar. By 1900, the United States was producing the majority of caviar sold throughout the world by harvesting thousands of lake sturgeon annually. At the peak, commercial landings were in the millions of pounds. Overfishing was made worse by dam construction for logging and hydroelectric energy production. This blocked lake sturgeon from their spawning grounds and concentrated them in small areas, making them vulnerable to fishing. Industrialization also added pollution to the Great Lakes Basin and degraded water quality. After European settlement and following thousands of years of sustainable harvest and traditional use by native peoples, lake sturgeon populations were reduced to 1% of what they were over the course of the lifetime of a single lake sturgeon. As lake sturgeon harvest for caviar, meat, and other products began to decline along with lake sturgeon numbers, concerns about the species rose. Some lake sturgeon populations are recovering with the help of scientists and conservation efforts, but they remain a fraction of what they were and continue to face challenges in the Great Lakes today. Shipping in the Great Lakes expanded when the Erie and Welland Canals were completed in the 1820s. Ocean-going vessels entered the Great Lakes and exchanged ballast water from thousands of miles away exposing the system to many different invasive species. The invasive fish known as round goby have spread throughout the Great Lakes, and scientists have found that they can eat lake sturgeon eggs. At the same time, lake sturgeon have learned to eat the round goby. Species like sea lamprey are large parasites that get nourishment by attaching to the outside of fish like lake sturgeon, causing harmful wounds like the one on this lake sturgeon's fin, or much worse. These factors, combined with others like dam construction and habitat degradation, mean that lake sturgeon have had to adapt to changing conditions in the Great Lakes in order to overcome the many different challenges they have faced. The Great Lakes region was a lake sturgeon meat producer and primary global source of caviar around the turn of the century. But for the past 100 years, Harvest has been insignificant compared to catches before 1920, prior to the lake sturgeon population decline. In New York, lake sturgeon were declared threatened in 1983, and the fishery was closed. There are several characteristics of the lake sturgeon life cycle that make their populations particularly vulnerable. For example, lake sturgeon are long-lived, and most female lake sturgeon need to reach their 20s before they can reproduce and then wait two to five years or even longer in between spawning. Male lake sturgeon are usually in their teens when they begin to reproduce regularly. Together, this means that it takes about 20 years to replace an adult lake sturgeon that is harvested, and even then, a replacement is unlikely to contribute to the population each year like many other fish species do. Conditions also need to be right for lake sturgeon to spawn successfully. When ready, Lake sturgeon need access to resources like clean, fast-flowing water and substrate like exposed cobble and rock. Scientists and managers have studied lake sturgeon to understand these characteristics and how they contributed to the lake sturgeon decline. In the process, they have also learned ways to protect and enhance lake sturgeon populations to help them recover. Scientists, managers, and many others have been involved in lake sturgeon conservation efforts in the Great Lakes. An important step towards lake sturgeon recovery was learning more about them and how to get more surviving in the wild. For decades, researchers have collected all types of information from the lake sturgeon they capture, like how large they are and information about their eggs and how they reproduce. This enabled scientists to learn how to collect eggs from adult female lake sturgeon and then fertilize those eggs with milk from male lake sturgeon. And very importantly, this can all be done with adult lake sturgeon alive, 
so they can be released back where they were collected. The fertilized eggs are raised in a hatchery, protected from predators when they hatch, and the baby lake sturgeon are grown to a size where they are better able to survive in nature. About four months after hatching, they are stocked back into the wild with a better chance to become adults themselves. Lake sturgeon researchers must capture fish to monitor the population and understand how it is recovering and responding to changes in the wild. Here is a lake sturgeon in a mesh net during a scientific survey. The nets are set for short periods of time so lake sturgeon are not tangled for long. Researchers bring in the net and place the fish in a cradle to protect it and make it easier to move. Many measurements are taken from the sturgeon and these measurements are important to understand if the fish are healthy. Here the lake sturgeon is being weighed and then it is placed on a measuring board so the length can be recorded. If scientists can't tell fish or animals apart that they study, they can't tell how much one has actually grown or changed since they saw it last. But if the sturgeon are tagged somehow, scientists can tell them apart and learn a lot about each one and the population. Here the lake sturgeon is scanned for what is called a pit tag that can't be seen from the outside of the fish. When scanned, this tag provides a number to the scientists that only one fish in the world has so they can see how much it has grown and changed since it was captured last, like a trip to the doctor. Information from many tagged lake sturgeon can tell scientists much more, like the health of the population, how fish are surviving, and where they are moving. Scientists have learned ways to study lake sturgeon without having to harvest them, which is good news for the recovering population. This sturgeon did not have a tag, so when it is put in the fish using a small needle before it is brought back to the water in the cradle and released into the wild. Perhaps in 20 or 30 years from now, it can provide more information if it is captured again by other scientists during their surveys.